almost couldn't get up here. I was meditating. <laughs> I was already there. <laughs> Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm Billy, and I'm grateful to be with you all today and for us to read our daily word. Together, my source. I am never away from spirit as I move through this life experience. One more time. My source. I am never away from spirit as I move through this life experience. And let's step over here if I can get some of the coiled wires and cords and things so I can stand over here. <laughs> I kind of I kind of know what was it in? <laughs> well, anyway, life goes on, right? So, uh, these prayers that you have put in here, and uh, those that you want to put in here now, place into the spiritual realm that we're in. We're always in a spiritual realm. It just depends on what frequency, right? They, uh, they go to Unity Village and are prayed for for 30 days. So if you would just relax and uh, do whatever you do to get in with spirit a little bit more now. Take a breath. And I'm just going to go back to where we were a minute ago with Daniel. Okay. Blessed spirit. Holy Spirit, whole healing spirit, thank you that we have you within us every moment of every day. Thank you that we only have to go within and know that the words we say, the thoughts we think, the feelings we feel are sent out and sent in. And so we're, we take care with these words and thoughts and feelings, knowing that we are actually taking care of our day, our future, the present moment becoming a success in every way for peace, for guidance, for healing in all ways. So we simply are grateful, knowing that the peace lies within. And so it is, in the name and the power of the Christ within and our way shower Jesus the Christ, we say, Amen. together. Sweep over my soul. Sweet Continue in this energy and begin to get still. At unity, prayer and meditation is our cornerstone. And let's take the opportunity to unite today as one. Let's represent what we would like to see happen for the entire planet. To 
step into this place of peace. So I invite you to get comfortable for the next few moments. Feet firmly on the floor, becoming grounded. Hands in a comfortable position. Beginning to breathe deeper. <sighs> the gift of breath. This gift of spirit that does sweep in love into my life now. I allow it to sweep in peace into my life now because I am awake and I am becoming more awake. I awaken to the power of spirit together. I am awake to the power of spirit. I would like to say it out loud this time, ready, together. I am awake to the power of spirit. Breathing deeper now. Allow this truth, this principle, to infuse every cell of your body. Become activated. In 2 Corinthians, we're told, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And also in 2 Timothy, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Today, we take control of our mind. And God, we are so grateful for that gift the power of our thoughts, the power of how we see the world. And more importantly, how do we see ourselves? Do we move through the highway of life and allow to be in flow state with spirit? In the coming moments, we make the choice to be about love. Even with those that we disagree with, we make the choice today to step into that flow, to step in that alignment with God, with the source of all, elevating our consciousness, elevating our frequency, our vibration, and it is there that we feel the joy of life. It is there that we can truly connect with our brother and sister. It is now time to take that spirit, to take that energy and that love into the sacred and holy silence, breathing this truth back out into the world, wrapping the world with this love, seeing everyone smiling, no matter what they look like, no matter who they are, finding peace in this moment. Breathing deeper still. We know it is in the silence where we are able to listen to spirit for answers that we seek. That is where our intuition is. We turn inward. Nothing can eclipse the light within. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen and amen. Well, good morning. good morning. It's been an exciting day already. And what I want to tell you is that all that stuff you saw with the cosmic confusion clicker earlier, we planned all of that. 
we planned it, not at all, to show you today that people across the world may decide to blame a few things on the eclipse. They may decide to say it's Mercury in retrograde, and maybe there's truth to that, I don't know, but we're gonna talk about how to avoid those cosmic potholes of life today so that you can step forward in love and have an even exciting, more exciting day and more exciting week. And I was so excited that uh, Katsuki, you are here with us. Thank you for being with us today and doing the concert later today. Uh, you play all these different instruments and, and uh, just take us to that place of love in our hearts. And thank you Sunday, Monday for her first time up here giving announcements. It's much harder than it looks, good job. We say we are free of judgment, full of love, and we are definitely full of love today. And we even have a new visitor with us with the name of love. And I love that. So thank you for being with us. And we also have uh, Amy, mother of serenity, Highmore, from Hawaii with us today. So thank you so much for being with us. Uh, yeah. Last week, we got to talk about what a GPS is, and we decided that it's not so much Siri and so much MapQuest as much as it is the God positioning system. And that's what we're talking about today. Uh, this, we ended, well, we began really by saying the first thing we got to do is get God access to our current location. <laughs> right? I mean, you can't, you can't say, whoa, is me, and there's all these problems in the world, but you're not even trying to get into alignment with God. Not even trying to see another way through the light or through the fog or through the dark. And we ended by saying, and the GPS said, your destination's ahead, and I invited you to upshift into turbo, maybe with a little nitrous oxide, and just <laughs> go, go, go. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today, and today we're going to do, uh, we're going to say, life's highway, GPS part two, where we had God positioning system activated. Are you ready to activate? Yes. If you're ready to activate, say, I am activated together. I am activated. And if that doesn't do it, I got something that will. <laughs> I, after the discussion last week, our very own Stephen Dunn decided to create a poem. I don't know if you did it like five minutes after I got done or 30 minutes. I don't really, yeah, that's okay. I don't know how you do it. But if everyone is not activated, I'm going to read that poem. Is that okay? If not, it, um, <laughs> it's too late. I'm going <laughs> to. It's happening. We're activated now. I don't, I don't make the rules, Stephen. It's called Life is a Highway. With roads never seen, every single curve brings a new scene. A trip of adventures to places unknown, quite often our destination takes us away from home. Finding our favorite way, a daily learning game, leaving behind that place from whence we came. Each of us are maps, unique unto itself, ours to find the way, since it's unlike anything else. Tap into the universe or use your GPS, find the perfect way that brings the most success. Follow the sacred clues that sound the most sane. That's my favorite line. <laughs> we need some sanity in the world these days. Okay, knowing all along it's God's favorite game. Always taking heed that the trail feels correct. Knowing within your heart you will ultimately connect. A lot of meditation and a touch of daily prayer. God will surely show you the best way to get there. Surveying the universe in your four-wheel drive, knowing with quiet, quiet assurance you will grow and thrive, foot on the pedal with love in your heart, going for the gold each day a brand new start. Guide me, dear Siri. <laughs> Keep me on the holy path. It's been quite a feat to give up the painful past. Looking into the rearview mirror that shows where we've been, but better to look forward than to go down that road again. 
Their journey of a lifetime has nothing to do with miles. Better to live this experience with a wink and a smile. And last week I said the reason the rearview mirror is smaller is that we don't want to spend so much focus on the past. That's why the windshield's much much bigger. So if you need a daily reminder, Stephen would be happy to email you that poem or frame it for your living room. Because today we're talking about the highway of life, but which highway are you on? 75 is a splendid highway. (laughs) If you're not sure if you're on Highway 75 or some other highway, I want to show you where you are. You are right there. (laughs) Can you see it? You are here. How many people are taking off tomorrow for the solar eclipse? I am. So do you need me to write your boss an excuse for you? What's the hold up? (laughs) Or your mother or father, I'll write you an excuse because this is a big deal. This only comes around how often? Do you know, when was the last total eclipse? If you're at 9 o'clock, you can't give it away. If, 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 when was the last, uh, to, so, when was the gla- last uh, solar eclipse in totality uh, of the United States? 79, 79, 79. Uh, no. Yes or no? The last one that only hit the United States, they say, was 100 years ago. Almost 99 years ago, excuse me, 99 years ago. But the problem with that is it's not necessarily true, too, because it hit the Bahamas. So you got to go even further back than that. Throw out a date, if you know it. That's a date, but it's wrong. Uh, (laughs) Off the top of my head, the date is... Okay. Okay, the last, or just on the continental United States in June 13th, you will remember this, the year 1257. But you purist in the back, I know you're saying, no, that's not exactly right either, because then it still hit a touch of Hawaii. So you got to go back even further than that. Uh, you got to go back 1,581 years ago for where it only hit the U.S. mainland. So before it was called the U.S. mainland, that's where it went. So this is 1,500 years in the making, and it's pretty amazing because uh, for a big part of the United States, or, or part of the United States, it'll be in its totality, and it'll be dark just like that. Uh, and some people say, how interesting that it took science so long to figure it out, to figure out what was going on. It took like a, a millennium for people to figure out that you do not have to be afraid of it. Because there used to be all kinds of cosmic chaos about it. Uh, Certain cultures believed all types of things, and and, and, and one of my favorites is that the dragon was eating the sun, and people were afraid of the dew. The dew was coming because of what was created in the in, the, in, in it, and then also uh, just how some people just doom and gloom, and people thought that we were going to be descended into chaos because of the absence of light. So it took a long time for people to actually get out of that notion and to understand that it is not necessarily a bad thing, or like the Navajo tribe knew all along, was that they felt like it was a sacred aligning. So what I ask today is how long is it going to take for America? Is it going to take a millennial to realize that we are all the same, that we are all connected, that it's not chaos, and that we have to come together and be one and wake up, wake up America? That's what needs to happen. Wake up. And I believe that that can happen because we see it happening right here around unity. But we're going to have to change our vision a little bit and to realize that opportunity is everywhere around us to make a difference. But it starts with us. It's not just words, peace on earth begins with me that we sing at the end. It starts with us. Now, Imelda Octavia Octavia Shanklin, I just love saying her name correctly. Uh, but she is an amazing Unity writer. She wrote, What Are You?, back in 1929, and she wrote this. 
Opportunity is everywhere always. It awaits your appreciation and your use. You actually got to use it. You cannot escape from it. Time clamors, importuning you to cope with its needs, imploring you to earn its rewards. Is there an opportunity now for you? You can't escape it. Eventually, you're going to come right back up against it. Some people say, oh, I love the Unity logo in front of the sun. Does that mean Unity is blocking light? Well, that's about as crazy as what they believed a super long time ago that uh, what the eclipse was doing. That was silly back then. But if we could call, if our future selves could call us on that phone again, our future selves would be like, whoa, that's a lot of silly stuff you guys are saying to each other these days. How about we remove the darkness? How about you come up against your own darkness, which could be called shadow self, come up against those old beliefs and find out what is truth? What is truth for you? What is truth for me? What is truth for when we come together as the Navajo or we come together as a tribe together, many tribes coming together? That is the opportunity that we have, and it begins with you. Eternity mutely, serenely discloses It's vistas of endeavor. Remember that word, endeavor, and consequences. So that's cause and effect right there. Life is opportunity. God is equipment in a sense that you can choose and use or choose and neglect. You must proceed with life. You have no alternative. You survive all change. You create and your creations follow you upon the path of your life. Now, if you want to zoom in on your cell phone and take a picture of that, that's fine because there's a lot to unpack here. But it says you can choose neglect or you can proceed with your life. You have to proceed with your life. You have no alternative. The alternative is how you're going to choose to perceive and bring the tribe together. Now, um, I have something here, a little prop I want to show you. I believe that I have a picture of it. Yes, so this is Evelyn, and Beverly's back in the background there, and there's Evelyn showing me how to use a very expensive pair of glasses. I have a prop. This is Amazon. Uh, Yeah, a very expensive set of Amazon box right here, right? So I get the opportunity to choose my experience with this box with this prop. Now, as Serenity helped us at the 9 o'clock, I asked her to look through it, and I said, what do you see? And she said, nothing. I see blackness. We We got the opportunity to see blackness and just the ugliness of what's going on in the world, or we can try to find the light. Now, some of us need to be sort of uh, nudged a little more than others, like I was. uh, 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 Evelyn took me outside right there on the balcony. I pointed it. What did I do? Point it right toward the sun. And it's kind of like the newspaper article said this morning in the paper. It says, scientists at home take note. (laughs) So we have to take note when we're looking straight. So she kind of, she kind of, you know, smacked me on the arm and said, no, no, no. You look at, you look at it through here like this. And then what happens is I have an even more expensive example, (laughs) Paraglat. This is Adidas. This is an Adidas set right here. But you open. You open it up, you can kind of tell there's like the white there. Did you guys do this in fourth grade? My science teacher would be so proud of me, Amy, today for doing this, except I think we only had little sheets of paper. But uh, So you got the white here, you've got the aluminum foil here, and you've got that hole right there to be able to see things a little bit differently like that. So if you want to zoom in on that, if you want to, I hear they're out of glasses for tomorrow, so you may want to be able to make one of those. But I want to think about today what your vision is doing. Because much like in this box, you have to have the light infused into the box for it to work. And even then, you have to look at this thing over here, and then it bounces off to show you this thing happening over there. And I feel like that's what a lot of us are doing, is we're looking at this thing over here, we're getting mad about this person, we're getting mad about this party, over here, and then we maybe even start developing that word I just don't like, hate. I don't like that word. 
at all, but I've heard it so many times this week. What does it do to your vibration when you say it? Yeah, it lowers it. It just lowers it. So I don't want to, I don't want to keep saying it because I don't want to feel that in my heart. I want to be able to say, okay. Uh, somebody yesterday said, well, James, life is messy. It can't be all huggy at unity and all that. And I want to say, well, yeah, it can, but <laughs> hopefully it won't take a million years. But when she said, well, can't I just be mad for a little while? And I said, yeah, you can do that. You can be mad. I give you three, maybe four seconds. Three, maybe four seconds, then you come right back. And then we're going to put light into the box. We're going to put light into our heart and our inside. And then we're going to eject that back out because that's what we do at Unity. Yesterday, we had an opportunity to meet uh, 10 of us guys, an eclectic tribe of men. I know you thought I was about to say misfits, but <laughs> now I'm going to use the word eclectic. Uh, we all got together, had an incredible breakfast uh, made by one of our sound guys up there. Ken, I think, is up there today. Yeah, he's waving at me. And we got together and we talked about ideas. And I love when Randy wrote me late last night and he says, I see 50 men at this next year. And you know what the name is? I'm going to tell you. It's called Men for Unity. It dash Pathfinders. Because we are pathfinders, and so are all of you. I know the divine sisters are. We already know that. But the men, you know, us coming together and being vulnerable, being willing to have these conversations, to have change in our hearts and talk to each other and be true pathfinders. Would you mind telling everybody what pathfinder word, sort of where it comes from? Or I don't know this, where it comes from, but That's you right. gave us a little definition yesterday about it. So we were talking about pathfinders yesterday, and back in the days before GPS in World War II, when our forces were flying people into Germany or other places, it would be dark, and the army knew where they wanted to go, and they knew how to get there, and they knew what the objective was. But on the journey, a lot of times their planes would get lost or misplaced, and so there was an advanced group of guys that would go out there in the dark and find their way and get on the landing zone and find where they were supposed to be. And they were then the beacon of light that guided in the rest of the men, thousands and thousands and thousands of people in. And so we feel like that fits our mission because we want to model a heart-based, spirit-led group of men for unity uh, to help bring a lot more souls in, in the change and expansion and changing the world. That's all, just change the world. That's all we're doing here. And uh, we're going to have to endeavor to be able to do that. There's a, in fact, that was sort of our working title of our name for the group, but I think it's working out pretty well right now. Sometimes people feel like their, lo their light is blocked or eclipsed by religion. And I know many people that stayed away from church for a long time, stayed away from religion because, it, interestingly enough, this book, this, this Bible was supposed to bring people together, not separate people and cause conflict. That was not the idea. So it's a little bit ironic. So for many of you, when you hear uh, you're going to explore the Bible again at Unity and read it like you are for the very first time, what that means is you're willing to look at it through a different lens. It means that you're willing to look at it sort of in a metaphysical way, which is what we do at Unity. We go beyond the words. That's what meta and physical mean. We're going beyond the apparent physical to see what it means in our life in a practical way today. That's what that means. So tell me if this is practical to you. Now, of course, we don't look at everything literal because you can't hardly do that in integrity, but we can look at it for purpose and meaning and inspiration. So from Ephesians 4.3, endeav endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Say that again. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now that's very interesting because Paul, they thought, wrote that up until about 1732. Uh, and then there was a big debate about who wrote it. And then they, a lot of Bible scholars said, well, it's Pauline theory, but it's not exactly Paul. And they get into this debate, and their unity separates because they're in this big debate about who wrote uh, th this epistle. Who cares? <laughs> Go beyond the meaning. What does it mean in your life right now? 
Unity. The you in unity doesn't mean who you're going to debate. The you in unity is you. The you in unity means unifying. And we do that in different ways. We get an opportunity as Ms. Shanklin said every single day. And I, Robert, are you, oh, Robert Edwards, come up here for a second. You're on the front row for a reason. <laughs> so today is the very first day since I've been here that uh, Robert has been on campus here at the church, but not been up there in upper heaven in the right. sound booth. Right. And uh, so I guess in theory you're not working today, but now all of a sudden I have you on stage. Isn't that interesting how that happens? So I'm going to give you the mic. Right. And this is my brother. Come over here. So we have something called a mark. And uh, we're going to be in the center. And uh, one of the things that uh, Robert and I were talking about a couple nights ago was that Michael Gott, who many of you know, who got his start here in Dallas and in many ways here at Unity of Dallas, we are talking about uh, someone who is about to come, become the senior minister at Unity of Houston, replacing a legend... Howard Caesar. Now, you might say, why is that exciting? Well, it's very exciting because we've seen how he has shifted and elevated his consciousness throughout the years, and Unity of Dallas played a big part of that. So what we talk a lot about at Unity is how can we um, unify even the unities together within the uh, movement? And we had a little bit of an idea here, so... Well, first of all, uh, being on the selection committee or the ministerial call committee, we, the congregation, what we heard from everyone was that we wanted a senior minister who would go out and be a participant in our community. James is fulfilling that. I know you met recently with uh, Karen, minister at yeah, Unity week. of Greenville. Yeah, yeah. And so James is fulfilling that. So. As we grow our consciousness in Texas and throughout this region, what James and I talked about is becoming more community in this region. Your turn. Oh, okay. Back to me. Well, we discussed doing it in a very creative way because, you know, uh, we're usually pretty boring here on Sundays, right? So <laughs> ne next Sunday we're going to be creative. And uh, I don't want to scare you off or head for the exits or anything, but we're going to do something with a little bit of the video camera. And uh, Michael, our floor uh, videographer back there, doesn't know this, so uh, surprise. Uh, what, what Michael will be doing, if, you, if you're going out of town, cancel it. Uh, but uh, you're going to come up on stage with that beautiful movie camera, and then I'm going to speak a, a word of congratulations to Michael in the camera. Now, he's just going to think that it's just me sending him a video card. But then something funny is going to happen as the camera pans over to the band, the boys over there. You guys are going to start playing. Then we're going to pan over to this congregation, which is going to be full right here. So I said, uh, you can, you know, come cute. Uh, you're, you already are. You're already beautiful. But it won't be, you won't be that in focus, so you don't have to worry about that twig of hair or anything like that. Just come, and we're going to fill this up, and we're just going to say something like, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate the Christ in you. And we are going to bless Michael Gott and the entire community. Thank you. Yeah, next week is, I believe, is his first week, so we'll send it, and then he, he can show, yeah. We, we can, uh, and then he can show it to his congregation, so... It will be great. Uh, we, now you're really trying to get us technical here. Uh, where <laughs> did you see what's happening? <laughs> it's always interesting to me how people come together and how people unify. I got a chance this past Sunday to do a celebration of life for Mary Magdalene Griggs, who went here for many, many years. And her name is Mary Magdalene. And when Ed Griggs, her husband, came in to, with Jan, his uh, daughter, to talk about the memorial, there, on the first or second day ever, the book Mary Magdalene was on my uh, desk or table, and I didn't even know that was her name. Very interesting. So then we planned it, and I found out so many interesting things about her that she was so much about unifying people that she decided after like 18 years of being single that she was going to unify herself the perfect mate. 
And what she did was, her, her faith was strong, okay? She endeavored to meet her man. And so she endeavored so much that she went and cleaned out her closet, a closet. I don't think it was her closet. She cleaned out a closet for, for this man that was going to be coming into her life. She cleaned out some drawers, and she began to have conversations with God about it so much so that she wrote in her journal exactly what those qualities were going to be. And she attracted Ed to her. And they had this glorious life together. And I had so, it was, you know, he, he really wanted to be a celebration, so we got to talk about some interesting things. And the fact that when they met for the first time, see, he's, he's what you call an angel. Now, in square dancing terms... He's a professional square dancer. So in square dancing terms, what that means is that he helps people learn how to square dance, basically. That's what he does. So he's an angel. But he found out later on that she was really his angel. Okay? So then I'm at this memorial, and I'm talking about how he went over to her and gave her a yellow rocker. I thought I was being really cool when I said that. And I noticed that everybody laughed. And I was like, well, it wasn't that funny. Uh, but it... It kind of was because it's not called yellow rocker. It's called yellow rock. And that means giving your, your partner a hug. And uh, if the person's in, the, if, well, excuse me, yellow rock is a friendly hug, okay? Um, there's also something that says crash and burn on here, but that means not what it sounds like. Uh, there's round dancing when couples dance, dance in a circle formation. There's square dancing. There's uh, a collar that actually directs the dancers through a square, a collar. So that's the voice they're hearing, and then that's how they act. So they're relying and trusting on that voice. And a cure does the same thing for a round dance. But yellow rock is when you are hugging your corner, what is called your corner. Uh, the, for a male, it's the person on the left. And uh, a red rock is you're hugging your partner there. I got all of that out good. So the Texas Federation president will be so happy with me. I got it right because she came and schooled me after the memorial. But, uh, but this whole idea of them coming together, square dancing, and then falling in love. I mean, it's an amazing story about manifestation and what are we putting out there and what opportunity are we taking to put it out there. So I want to show you... Um, a couple of slides before we quit. It went all the way back there. How fascinating. <laughs> Mercury in retrograde. There we go. Uh, yeah, so this, when you leave here today and you come to a sign, if it's like this one where one sign's pointing to the right, never, never land. The sign on the left says never say never land. <laughs> then sometimes but not always land. That's kind of like when you tell somebody, oh, I'll probably do it, but I doubt it. <laughs> Here it says, say it, but spray it, land. I don't know. And then for some reason, Newark is to the right. So it, <laughs> it's a joke about Newark somehow. But last week I said that when you get on that highway of life and you put the hammer down, when you decide you're going to go for it, I said that's extremely important. But even more important than speed is the direction you're going in. And also what you're listening to and knowing that there's going to be change on the way and listening to your soul, listening to your soul, turning inward, being the light, and then having fun doing it. Now this one is saying this, these trees are growing up, but notice how they have not touched each other. Are you going to take the opportunity to impact somebody else's life yet you're not sort of smacking them with your branches. You're taking a chance to be intertwined with them at the roots, realizing that we're all one, but allowing them space, allowing them space to grow. And my final example today, dun, 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 dun. The flip chart is back. This will be known as the GPS flip chart series of talks. If you weren't here last week, uh, things got a little wild. Um, you can see it on our Facebook later today or our uh, Uni of Dallas YouTube, what happened there. So when I asked Randy to bring this back up, he goes, oh, you're going to go over the top today, aren't you? I said, no, no, I'm just going to be calm today. It's going to be very, very calm. Understated. Okay, okay so 
When we talk about direction, what direction are you going to go in? Mark Twain said, two most important days of your life, the day you were born and the day you figured out what? Why you were born. Okay, so now I'm adding to the why of understanding your direction that you were going in your life. And how are you doing it? So here's, this has also been a theme of circles. And uh, so what this is, put a big A right there. And I'm going to, uh, by the now you know how fabulous my artiste skills are. This is Sally and Barry. I'm protecting the not so innocent out there. And along with Sally and Barry are a millions and millions and millions of other people. This is most of the population on the planet right now that are doing things in their life pretty average. That's what the A stands for. I mean, they're just kind of getting through life. They're basically the same person they are five years from now as now. Then outside, you have another circle right here. And this is good. This is people that have kind of moved out of doing things average, and they're, they're kind of good now. I mean, they're doing it. And this is quite a few people here. They do a pretty good job at their fam with their family and, and their job. They're doing pretty good, everything. Uh, nothing spectacular, but they're, they're pretty good. So we got a lot of people here in the average. we got more people in the good. And then there's another ring called very good. VG. I mean, these people, they do it much above average, uh, but still not a lot of people. I mean, this is less people uh, doing it a certain way. They've kind of, they get a promotion here and there. They, they, they go beyond the call of duty sometimes, uh, but they're, they're very good. They, they're doing a good job out there. But then there's this last ring. Now, there are, this is rare. There is not a lot of people here who are... Uh, there in this area, this is called WC. That means you are doing it world class. I mean, your meditation life, you are dedicated with your meditation life. Every day, every day, or almost every day. And your alignment and your ability to just seek opportunities and walk through that doorway, you are world class at that. And at your job, you go beyond the call of duty. You give everything you have but you do it smartly. It's not work harder, it's work smarter. And with the way you are making a difference in the world, you are world class at that too. It may not be that you're out winning the Nobel Peace Prize, but you're doing it in your own way. That is world class. So if you are in this little circle with Sally and whoever I said, then I want you to go <laughs> from there to there, that's your direction. That's the direction, is to strive for the world class. And like I said last week, not just lollygagging around in your life, but instead you are going after it with the highest frequency, the highest vibration that you have. Now, that's what we're going to do as a community, and that's what the world needs right now. So I want you to just think about what direction are you going in with the opportunities that are in front of you and endeavor to get to here because the best really is yet to come. No matter what they tell you in media, no matter what's out there, the best is yet to come. If you turn to remove any blocks, any dark blocks, go within, find the light. Thank you, God bless you, namaste. Call me.